North Korea might be preparing to conduct another missile test. Pyongyang is said to be preparing a long-range missile test in the near future, which it believes can reach the west coast of the United States. That's according to Russian lawmaker Anton Morozov, who was quoted by RIA news agency on Friday after reportedly returning from a visit to North Korea, though he didn't specify which officials had given him the information. According to a U.S. official, there have been signs Pyongyang could be planning a missile test on or around October 10, the anniversary of the founding of the ruling Korean Workers' Party and a day after the Columbus Day holiday in the U.S. Russian news agency RIA Novosti cited Anton Morozov, a member of the Russian lower house of Parliament's International Affairs Committee, as saying North Korea is preparing for new tests of a long-range missile. He said North Korean officials showed him mathematical calculations to prove their missile could hit the western seaboard of the United States, adding that the mood in the north was quite belligerent. There are also reports the north may test a missile or conduct a nuclear test around October 10th, the anniversary of the founding of the ruling Korean Workers' Party. Reuters quoted a U.S. official in Washington as saying there had been indications North Korea could be preparing for a missile test on or around October 10th, but did not elaborate on what form it might take. The North has accused U.S. President Donald Trump of declaring war after he warned the regime would be totally destroyed if it continued to threaten the United States and its allies. North Korea's U.N. ambassador at the U.N. last month. Should the U.S. ignore the repeated warning and punch open the DPRK with the military force at the last the DPRK will inflict the punishment, which is the power of self-reliance and self-development. A top CIA official for the Korean Peninsula has also warned the U.S. should be prepared for action on October 10th. While concerns are growing, some experts have also cautioned that in the past, North Korea has not staged launches despite indications it would. But they also caution Pyongyang hasn't staged launches despite indications that it would in the past. Tensions over North Korea have ramped up in recent weeks since Pyongyang staged a series of missile tests and had a heated exchange of tough rhetoric with Washington. The Pentagon says the United States has not declared war on North Korea, so it's a continued general war of words. When do we reach the final straw? You reach the, the straw that the Congress would have to make a decision as to whether a war or not. If North Korea took a shot or attempted to take one, to, one of our aircraft down, especially over international airspace, and they have done that in the past, incidentally. This particular time, I'm not sure whether they have the capability to be able to take down a stealth bomber. Uh, if that happened, that would certainly be the straw that broke the camel back. What type of military action are we talking about if that's exercised? If, you, if they attempted to take one of our aircraft, we would certainly launch a strategic uh, uh, placement of uh, ordnance along, especially north of the border of the uh, DMZ, where all that conventional artillery is placed, because that would be the first thing that North Korea would do to take it out on, on uh, South Korea. And in addition to that, they, they would take out industrial areas where munitions are known to be uh, manufactured in addition to the, the missiles that they allegedly have and their nuclear sites if they have it. The problem is most of that is mobile. All right, you were talking about South Korea. U.S. Uh, Air Force Brigadier General Rob Gibbons retired, said a war between the United States and North Korea would result in about 20,000 South Koreans dying every single day. So how do you protect South Korea? You almost can't. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Conventional artillery is all across the, the northern part of the DMZ. I was there. I saw that. It's all geared and specifically targeted to Seoul and the higher uh, populated areas of South Korea. To be able to take all that out at the same time is almost impossible. All right, finally, General, how does uh, China play a part of it? You've been saying it all along. They're key in all of this. China said that if North Korea started the action, they would stand by and not do anything. I have a little bit to uh, understand on that one. They said the same thing in 1950. If we started it, allegedly, then they would come to the aid of North Korea. And now... Let's go back to October 1950. On 20 October, United Nations troops have seemingly sent the bulk of the communist forces fleeing in defeat toward the Manchurian border, 100 miles to the north. From west to east, U.S., 
British and South Korean troops are pursuing the disintegrating communist forces. By 27 October, South Korean troops have reached the Manchurian border on the Yellow River near Chosan, and other UN forces have advanced against virtually no opposition. But on the same day, a sudden, unforeseen factor changes the entire course of the war. Chinese communist troops cross the Manchurian border and help the North Korean Reds drive back UN forces. Chinese communists fighting in Korea are estimated at 75,000, with another 500,000 across the border in Manchuria posing a more serious threat. By 8 November, UN forces have been driven back considerably. But on this date, another unforeseen event occurs. Chinese and North Korean communist troops suddenly break off contact with United Nations forces and fight only rear guard delaying actions as once again UN troops drive toward the Manchurian border. On 20 November, another United Nations unit reaches the Manchurian border. This time it is a United States unit, the first US outfit to reach the border. As United Nations troops continue to advance in other areas, much depends on what the huge Chinese army will do next. China will never allow chaos and war on the peninsula. The first sign of the growing threat from China. Captured in East Coast battles 50 miles from the Manchurian border, these troops belong to Chinese Red Army divisions in the combat zone. Chinese and North Korean captives are brought out of the hills to Wonsan and Ham Hung. The Chinese are better clothed than their North Korean comrades. With their quilted uniforms, they wear tennis shoes wrapped in layers of burlap, making a kind of shoe pack. In contrast with the Chinese, the North Koreans are in rags at this stage of the war. The prisoners double time across the Wonsan airfield. They are being marched to landing craft, which will take them to Busan. Since the beginning of the war, the North Koreans have suffered 460,000 casualties, including the dead, wounded, and captured. 130,000 red prisoners have been taken at this time. Two women are in this group. I believe I have mentioned that the President Trump, well, it's his first presidential term, and he's gaining momentum. He's building up his experience in this field. And we have to dialogue on this issue, he listens to what I'm saying, he listens to my arguments. Well, I know that everything that's happening in North Korea is quite irritating for them. We understand that. The, but any actions aimed at undermining the NSC resolution compliance, we are condemning that. And on North Korea very quickly. The foreign minister said you have declared effectively war on North Korea and the North Korean government has threatened to shoot down or aim at American planes flying in international airspace. I'd like your reaction. Okay, well, I'll answer the second one first. We are totally prepared for the second option, not a preferred option, but if we take that option, it will be devastating. I can tell you that devastating for North Korea. That's called the military option. If we have to take it, we will. Thank you.